Cloud is a great character. However, I fear that his fan base, and even the company that owns him, have no idea who he is. I know how pretentious it is to make that claim, the claim that you know better than everybody else, so let's take a look and see if we can meet in the middle. Who is Cloud? This answer might be a little difficult to get accurate, because we're going off Japanese translation from the 90s. Like how this line here is completely wrong. Although I do miss how writers had more balls back then. It's possible his character may be different in Japan, it wouldn't be at first. This is also from a time where voice dialogue wasn't common, and graphics and details weren't that impressive. Everything is interpreted by the script and the over-exaggerated body language. Cloud is from Final Fantasy VII. He's pretty aloof, while also arrogant, cocky but proud. He can warm up to people and will do anything within reason to achieve his goals. He's a mercenary who's taken a couple of odd jobs. His renown for his work experience at Shinra puts him in high demand. He spends most of the game chasing after this asshole, Sephiroth, who pulls a couple of pranks on him, throws stuff at him, jerks him around with strings, until he's had enough and clears him in two. A startling revelation is made about halfway through the game when Cloud realises that his identity is fake. Due to some trauma and being unable to admit his failure, he ends up stealing the identity of someone else who was basically everything he wished he achieved. He becomes his own man and continues on with what's important. He gets himself into a movie eight years later where he spends his time doing nothing, saying nothing, not emoting, refusing to hold a conversation. He tries some part-time work at Disney where words come out of his mouth but he never actually says them. He pops over to his neighbor's house during Halloween and acts like a zombie. Kind of shitting me to summarize everything so quickly so let's go deeper. Cloud is a loser. His dad died when he was young, he would have had some trouble growing up. The other kids made fun of him and he got into several fights. Yeah, it's a cliche. His only friend doesn't realize he's dense. He gets blamed for Tifa falling from a cliff. He vows that one day he'll become a first class soldier. One of the highest ranks for a soldier in this world. He achieves his goal and returns after many years following Sephiroth, the greatest soldier on the planet. Sephiroth gets angry when he discovers he's a test 2 baby, slaughters the entire town, including Cloud's mom, and Cloud puts him down. Obviously, this will be really traumatic to Cloud. Like everybody on the planet, Cloud looked up to Sephiroth. He was a heroic idol. Despite this, however, he never lets it get him down. He stays proactive, he brags about his job position, he can puff out his chest when he needs to show off, he makes jokes, he floats, he can tease, he's cheeky, he's a fast learner, he can embarrass himself, he gets motion sickness, he panics in confined spaces, he knows when to slow down and be sympathetic, he is a character. All this comes from his dialogue, his body language and how people react around him, some of which are options available to the player. The characters will actually comment if you decide to lead an all boys party or take the girls instead. They even manage to translate his expertise into the tutorial. If you decide to come to this building and talk to these guys, you can learn about how the mechanics of the gameplay works. They wrote it like the guys were asking Cloud. He's a first class soldier, he would know all this shit. They manage to explain how the game works to the player while also keeping the story elements accurate. At the start of the game, other characters are stunned that he's not so cold and emotionless as they initially believe. He's willing to help out Avalanche, despite his protests, or willing to look out for other people. He starts off cold, but warms up to other people, and they even tease him for being cool. They even playfully cheer him on at times. Cloud doesn't even look cool. Look at him. His hair is wild and unkempt. His shoulder plate looks cheap. Like, he can only afford this piece of armor. His shirt looks lame. His pants look too big. He's got basic boots and about to hide how big his pants are. He's even wearing suspenders to hold up his huge pants. How often is someone cool while wearing suspenders? Even this bitch mocks his appearance. Compared to Sephiroth, who looks stylish, black, sleek, professional, he has long white hair, 
It's like a dare, an insult to his missions. He doesn't keep it tied up, but he's so good at his job that he can still destroy monsters without the wind blowing it in his face, getting caught or burned. Even Sephiroth can be aggressive or sympathetic while we're at it. Cloud can sleep anywhere, which includes right next to this pipe, and heavily implied to also be crammed with the other members of Avalanche. So he probably has massive BO from all that sweat. He had the option to sleep in this terrible room. Jesse swipes his face full of soot. Probably didn't get it all. This explosion caused burn marks. He falls and lands on his flower bed. So he coughed up blood and got covered in dirt. Climbing in these rafters would most likely be dusty and full of spiders. The only time he cleaned himself was during this optional area. That's a whorehouse. But he still shared a bath with several buff men. So he was shimmering in their sweat. Probably also got the aroma of Astroglide attached. He puts on makeup, which he never really takes off. Then he falls through a trapdoor that leads to the sewers. Oh, but maybe he only got his boots wet. Well, in this boss fight, this creature causes a sewer tsunami to drench the characters. Gross. Okay, well, that's not a fair argument. In media, video games, movies, books, etc. You don't think about this shit. Everybody keeps that stuff out. Except for this game. You have to sleep and poop. Nobody needs to know that stuff. I'm mostly just having some fun. But still, Cloud did bang Tiffa in an open field while all his friends watched. Then delivered a speech while still in his afterglow. So he doesn't really adhere to the idea of decency. By the way, this scene was originally supposed to happen in this hay bale, which doesn't improve his image. These two are really filthy. Do you really see these two characters banging in a field? Compared to Advent Children, Crisis Core, Dirge of Cerberus, Dissidia, even Kingdom Hearts, Cloud can only be described as emo, depressed, etc. He's not even one note, he's no note. He keeps to himself for no real good reason, barely talks, has no insight, makes no jokes. Listen to all these battle lines. It's the same exact tone for all of them. Gonna hang back for this one. That went pretty well. You did good. Even this line, which originally came off as Cloud being insane. <laughs> Black materia. Now comes off like he's scoffing at a lame pun. He should be sounding so insane that it's scary. Ares freaks out. He doesn't care when Rufus comes back from the dead. Rufus was a secondary villain in FF7. He tried to execute Cloud and his party, live. He cuts him off when Rufus is about to explain how he survived a barrage of energy cannons. Second to Sephiroth, Cloud had a hate burner for the guy. Why the hell don't you care about this? You should be pissed off. Even when Sephiroth comes back from the dead, and don't ask, it's stupid, he barely reacts. Considering he feared Sephiroth controlling him, which he does, watched him slaughter his home village, killed his sweetheart, technically, summoned up Doomsday, crawled into a crater and personally slaughtered him, don't you think he'd be a bit surprised? Don't you think he would ask questions? How about going ballistic or freaking out over the idea that this asshole came back from the dead? When he beats him again, he's like, eh. I would even buy it if he rolled his eyes, annoyed that he's going through this shit again. A bad direction, sure, but it's better than nothing. When Sephiroth stabbed Ares, also Ares is the correct name, there's too many reasons why it should be. When he stabbed her, Cloud broke down right in front of him. A bit melodramatic. Also, it's a PS1 game, but he's reacting. He's being a character. This is called writing. Do you really see this guy reacting to someone's death? Right at the end, right before you walk into the final confrontation, Cloud says, all right, everyone, let's mosey. Do you really see this asshole using the word mosey? Oh, oh, but when Zack dies, we get Here, I think I can make it better. It really doesn't work. 
Especially when you don't show emotion. Ah, oh, but he looks sad though. Cry those crocodile tears. Originally this scene was shorter, but it said a whole lot. Like how Zack, the real first class soldier, was eventually beaten down by average grunts. He doesn't get a glorified warrior's death. He gets shot here, his life could have ended right at this moment, but to make sure of it, his body is riddled with bullets. It's not a romanticized death, it's real, it's tragic. Cloud is in a comatose state for this whole ride, so this reaction is basically him not understanding what's going on and then shifts his persona. This remake makes it look like he's fully awake, which ruins the idea of him accidentally stealing his identity. Now it looks like he did it on purpose, but kind of forgot. It was always up in the air whether stealing his identity was intentional or not, but it's pretty clear here, with Zack saying he's his living legacy, even though he doesn't know who Cloud is, he spent only like a few weeks with him, and Cloud was gone for most of it, in the head. Cloud and Zack's relationship, even if they never actually knew each other, is really important. Zack is a dork. His use of the Buster Sword seemed more attached to his identity. Everybody looking at him walking into combat with this would think he's a friggin' moron, but let him go because he's first class. And they're right. Zack's the kind of guy who would swing around a stupid sword like this, just because he could. I don't like Crisis Core. In fact, I could describe it as... You ruined it. You ruined it and I'm leaving. However, one thing I thought they nailed was the portrayal of Zack. This is pretty much how I viewed Zack. The only reason to buy this stupid game. His positive attitude, his little quirks, the way he reacts to the story, everything. Well, except for when they retcon the Buster Sword. Now is an important weapon instead of the stupid piece of shit it's supposed to be. Why is this important? Because Cloud thinks Zack is cool, which makes him an even bigger loser. The coolest guy he imitates is also a huge dork, except he's a successful dork. In order for Cloud to be Cloud, Zack needs to be Zack, but they got him right, why can't they get Cloud right? Funny how the audience have the wrong memory about a game where wrong memories are a theme. The most important aspect to Cloud is his sanity. It starts off very small, Cloud gets flashes and hears someone's talking to him. It's so small you most likely will forget about him. He freaks out a bit when he comes across Genova, but he can pass that off as being disgusted like Barrett is. Unknown to the player at the time, his backstory is a huge lie. It really gets bad at the Temple of the Ancients. Cloud suddenly starts giggling to himself and talks about the Black Materia and Meteor Spell that was just introduced to the story. Ares dismisses it knowing Cloud wouldn't like to hear it. Cloud gets the Black Materia and he's forced to just hand it over to Sephiroth. Then a scene everybody most likely erased from their own memory happens. Cloud starts beating the living shit out of Ares. She got a black eye from this. They're not going to remake this in HD, that's for sure. Cloud wakes up and is scared Sephiroth will control him again. Which he does, in a scene where the player is forced to raise their sword and attempt to cleave Ares in two. You can even rock the movement back and forth to show him struggling. Or being sexually suggestive. Ruin a scene if you want, it's all in good fun. This control reaches its penultimate conclusion in the Northern Crater when Sephiroth reveals the backstory was fake. That Cloud is merely a clone of himself. Cloud finally breaks down. He gives up. He even begs Hojo to give him a number that all other clones had because he just wants to be nothing but a clone now. He's lost his mind. Completely under his control, Cloud gives the real Sephiroth the Black Materia. Yeah, he gives to him a twice. Play the game if you're wondering how he got it back. Tiffa finds him later, but he's catatonic. They fall into the live stream and work at repairing Cloud's mind. It doesn't make sense. Revealing that he's not an actual clone, but a real person who was blamed for Tiffa's injury while looking for a dead mum, more trauma, and vowed to show everyone he's worth a damn. He returns to his normal self. But this cloud feels like he never left that fucking chair. 
how did we get here? Why does everybody view him as this emo stereotype that he only did one scene for a good reason? Even the other characters mock this view in the original game. He acts more like, yeah, Squall. And nobody likes that asshole. Look at Lightning in FF13. Her character creation was literally just a female cloud. She basically had no character. There were a couple of scenes where it seemed like a personality was popping up. But they advertised her third game by asking if she would be able to finally smile in the ending. Three games to get one emotion and everybody forgets the range of emotions Cloud had in one game. What the hell happened here? Not even just him, every character was basically flanderized. If there's any character that's close to Cloud, it's Vincent and even he likes to show off. You think he didn't practice his backflip? Advent Children Cloud is just not interesting or even interested himself. Doesn't care about people who tortured him, ran away from his friends so he doesn't really care about them. What a surprise. You never, call. never calls? I called him all the fucking time. Even when a child passes out in front of him, he sounds the same. Show some concern, a little empathy. For fuck's sake, show something over your bloody girlfriend getting her ass beat so hard she starts bleeding from her nipples. It honestly feels like he's just following a director's orders and just saying his lines. Even friggin' Rude is calling him out on this bullshit. You don't care. He talks about his sins, which make no sense. Except for being a terrorist, he never really did anything bad malicious or evil. He was either controlled or his mind was broken. He tries to make a point that all of that is behind him and all his troubles are now just memories. But he sure still acts like a depressed freak who can't get over everything wrong in his life. He only kind of shows anger at one point because he got shot through the heart then smiles at the end. That's not a smile. Kingdom Hearts 2 ends his plotline with him getting Tifa's light and getting rid of Sephiroth, but he still sounds the fucking same. In Dissidia, he does nothing, but neither does anyone else, so who cares? There's some really good commentary tracks about this waterfall in the Tomb Raider remake. They explain that this waterfall was designed by how people remember it. Want to know how tall it was in the original game? Yeah, it's um, a little different from what we remember. Changing him to what pop culture remembers is disingenuous. This isn't even death of the author. This isn't even a JK Rowling retcon. This is character regression. If you wanted to do the emo main character that was popular at the time, do it with this asshole. We're going to talk about one of my biggest gripes. The Buster Sword is stupid. It's a broadsword with extra mass. However, the reason why we love this shit is because writers think up BS reasons explaining why it can work. The Buster Sword is not elegant. Its function is in its name. It busts things. It uses its weight to do most of the damage. It's probably closer to an axe. Look at Cloud's stance. He's holding one leg back to help counterbalance the weight. When he attacks, he dashes forward with the sword high up in the air, then just throws it down. He's not aiming for anything important, he's just throwing it in front of him and if they get hit, it's their own fault. Even his first level limit break follows this idea. His first ultimate badass go fuck yourself attack is just him jumping. He just jumps and swings down. His first limit break is just him using more weight. For some reason, everybody thinks the best way for him to use his surfboard sized piece of metal is like a katana. He swings it around constantly like it has no weight. He does this to deflect bullets where he should be using it like a shield. He's constantly running around with it, doing flashy swings while running up walls and shit. He even pulls a flashy move using five of them at once. At one point, he even throws a couple of them like a friggin' boomerang. Come on! Look at the city here. He's just Standing straight. I don't care how strong you are. If the size doesn't match, he's just going to topple over. There's no counterbalance. 
The momentum doesn't come from the swing, it comes from the size. There's no weight to it. When this guy actually made the Buster Sword for real, it needed two people to hold it. While Cloud is buffed by Materia, he's still just one man. But now he can dual wield them. Even friggin' Garland, the final boss of the first game, has to drag his weapon around. Something that big will have a hard time stopping. Look at Zidane's stance. You can tell immediately his personality and his fighting style. Cloud is just... nothing. Kingdom Hearts does this a little better. In your fights against Cloud, he moves slow, he makes huge swings, he does a charge attack that focuses more on the weapon's momentum. But even then they still fuck it up by having him doing flashy Dragon Ball Z style attacks while flying around with one wing. Uh, don't ask about the one wing, I don't think it was ever answered. He doesn't look like Cloud, he has no personality to him. Why is all this important? Because it's a direct contrast to Sephiroth. He's elegant, he's swift, his big dick katana represents his professionalism. His stance makes him look like a cold, calculating assassin. He kills everything in one strike, meaning he pays close attention to the enemy, makes one very quick, very precise cut. This is to show how far ahead he is compared to everyone else, especially Cloud. He knows how to end everything instantly, because he's just that good. Nothing to do with power levels or anything, his number isn't just that big, he's just good at it. Kingdom Hearts also does him well. In his fight, at least at the start, he keeps his distance. He hops forward and makes a quick whip with his sword, although he does start throwing meteors at you. In Kingdom Hearts 2, you see a full on fight between Cloud and Sephiroth, and, uh, and it just sucks. They fly around the area, clashing swords, wall running in the background, repeatedly striking each other's swords, not attempting to attack the person, attempting to attack the sword. If they both had a normal sized katana or short sword, then this fight wouldn't be so bad. Although when you look into the accuracy of katanas in media, you'll discover it's all romance sized, but whatever. These two have widely different weapons, but shouldn't be used like this. It really should be about who can get their correct angle of attack first. Sephiroth, who will need quick reaction time to dodge, or Cloud, who just needs to get close. Their weapons should never lock. But you may say that without all the flash, it would be very boring. Fair point. I'll direct you to this fight between Obi-Wan and Darth Maul. I never really watched this show, however I really like this fight because it shows how brutal a fight between two professionals can be. The fight begins way before the first swing. They're measuring each other up, adjusting their stance, figuring out which fighting style would be most appropriate. Maul goes for a cheap shot, Ben steps back and ends it. It's so fast and yet so much happens. It's not... A fight between Cloud and Sephiroth doesn't need to be like this, however it needs to be something more than just banging swords against each other. A fight with weight has more going on than just flying around banging. <laughs> but wait you see, what about all these attacks in game? Ok, it's a video game, a square game. So there's a lot of flashy moves and attacks. However, the gameplay is separate from the story and function of the world. We know that these characters aren't actually using these moves. Cloud isn't really summoning up meteors from his sword. Barrett didn't suddenly learn how to fire a satellite laser. You're not really summoning up Bahamu to nuke the area. This is all just for fun. Which is why I'm kinda annoyed at that narrative dissonance complaint people usually bring up in games. You know, a complaint like, it's really unbelievable for Nathan Drake to have killed a thousand people. I know, I know he couldn't have killed a thousand people, I killed a thousand people. The story of what's happening to the characters is different from what the characters can do in-game. 
The reason why I'm bringing this all up, aside from dealing with the fanbase, is because of the remake. Expressing fear that Square Enix will get Cloud wrong. It's why I wasn't happy at the announcement. Square hasn't exactly been hitting home runs in the last decade. With the way he's been portrayed in other media, I fear he'll just be the same zero note guy. I won't be seeing him laughing, smiling, crying, getting frustrated, showing off, caring, getting motion sickness and having his friends fix it for him, and getting fucking hyped that he won a chocobo race. Instead, I'll be seeing him just moping around. I'll be lucky if he does that. Now, you may easily dismiss this whole video by stating that if I want to play Final Fantasy 7, I can just go back and play it, as it will always be there like I did to get footage. Here's the thing, it's not a problem for me, it's a problem for new people. The majority of people that play a game are the people who played it at release. Very rarely will someone actually pick up a game that's more than a few years old. The people who played the PS3 or PS4 version are the same people who played the PS1 version. Even then, not everybody came back. Some of those people don't play video games anymore. Some are dead. Even though I don't like the idea, people who weren't around in the 90s would never pick this game up. It's just the reality of video games. A lot don't age well. They all can't be Mario Bros. 3. Most people who will be buying the Final Fantasy VII Remake are new people who have only heard of the legacy. A lot of them weren't even alive when Final Fantasy VII originally came out. They can't compare and contrast. They may be getting a story with a zero character cloud. Then they will drop the game. Most won't even finish. They will never experience his original character arc. They will go on thinking that the Final Fantasy VII fanbase are nostalgic morons gushing over a guy who has no personality. It's not even a problem of just having different tastes, it's eating a completely different meal. They may not experience something amazing. Even if some people would never like his original story, I want them, I want them to not like his story. Or an even worse idea, they actually end up liking a less developed, poorly written arc. It really hurts to see people liking something of poorer quality. Because you just know that they would be happier seeing it through your eyes. Sorry for sounding so pretentious.